Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to go over how to safely and properly check a dual capacitor for any air conditioning or refrigeration system. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Today we're going to go over dual capacitors and if you find this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and let's get straight into it. Before we can begin by testing our dual capacitor, safety is always first, so the first thing you want to do is turn the power off to your unit, either through a pull switch, a fuse box, or a breaker panel, whichever way you can, and if you could, lock out, tag out. Once we turn the power off to our system, I highly recommend that you take out your voltage meter and confirm that you no longer have power coming into the unit. Some people hotwire things and some components just don't work properly. So safety is always first. Double check you have no incoming power after you turn the power off. Once we have turned off our power and confirmed there is no more power coming into the system, next we can move on to opening up our control panel and getting to our dual capacitor. Sometimes capacitors hold a charge and what you're going to want to do is discharge that capacitor before you get anywhere near this thing. There are tools available on the market to safely discharge a capacitor. This is the Subco Captis. This is a capacitor discharge pen and this is for discharging capacitors safely without the risk of electrical shock. Unfortunately, most people do not carry a capacitor discharger in their van as I highly recommend them as safety is always first. Typically what you would see a technician do is take a insulated screwdriver and short out the terminals just like this. So you would hold on to the insulated part of your screwdriver, make sure you don't touch the metal and basically short out your terminals. Like this, you will be discharging your capacitor. Now that we have turned off the power to our system, confirm there is no incoming power and discharge your capacitor. Our next step is to isolate our capacitor. And the way we're going to do that is by taking off the wires that are connected. Before pulling off our wires, I recommend that you take a photograph or take a notepad and write down exactly where each wire goes so you don't forget. I recommend using a pair of needle nose pliers to remove your wires so you don't hurt your fingers and you also don't rip the wire off of its solderless connector. Here is the top view of our capacitor. And as you can see, we have three terminals, one, two, and three. This is what makes it a dual capacitor. Typical capacitors, either a start or run, you will only see two terminals. If we look closely at this terminal, it is actually labeled, it says HERM. This stands for Hermetic Compressor, and this is where your compressor will get connected to. If we look at this terminal, it is labeled as FAN, and this is the terminal where your FAN will get connected to. If we look closely on this terminal, we read C, and this stands for common. One thing I notice many technicians get confused with is the C and the HERM terminal. C does not stand for compressor, it stands for common. HERM is a terminal you would connect your compressor to. Here's a real life scenario that has happened to be many times. Sometimes you're going to encounter a dual capacitor and it's so severely rusted you can't actually read the terminals of what they actually are. So one thing that I did notice is that this common terminal, you're going to notice has the most points of connection. You actually have one, two, three, four points where you can connect the wire. The one with the most points of connection is always going to be your common. Then, as you can see, your HERM terminal only has three points of connection compared to your fan terminal, which only has one. That is how you're going to differentiate the HERM terminal and the FAN terminal. Now that we have gotten all that out of the way, now what are we actually testing for? You need to know the ratings of your capacitor before you can actually determine if it is good or bad. So if we look closely, this capacitor, it says 25 plus 5 microfarads plus or minus 5%. What this is telling me is that one capacitor is 25 microfarads and the other capacitor is 5 microfarads. As this is a dual capacitor, it is 2 in 1. The higher MFD or microfarad rating is always going to be for your compressor and the smaller is going to be for your fan motor. So 
25 microfarads is for your compressor and the 5 microfarads is for your fan motor. The multimeter that I'm using today is the Fluke 902FC HVAC clamp meter and we're going to spin our dial to this symbol here which stands for capacitance and we're going to be reading microfarads. If we look closely we can see a UF symbol and this also stands for microfarads. Now we can begin by testing our capacitor. We have two leads coming from our multimeter and the idea here is to put one lead on common and then check between common and fan or common and herm. So between common and fan we should be reading 5 microfarads and we have 4.9 microfarads. Next we can check the next capacitor. We're going to put one lead on common and the other on Herm. We have 24.6 microfarads. We should be reading between common and Herm 25 microfarads plus or minus 5%. And then between common and fan, we should be reading 5 microfarads plus or minus 5%. In a perfect world, between common and Herm, we should be reading exactly 25 microfarads and between common and fan we would be reading 5 microfarads. There is no such thing as perfect and that's where the plus or minus 5% comes from. Typically rule of thumb in the industry we use the plus or minus 10% rule but regardless this is how you check it and be conscious of that percentage difference. It's important to note to never just go by the rule of thumb. It is important to go by the manufacturer's ratings. Here we can clearly see plus or minus 5%. If anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.